it's just so good. It's so good. It's so good. Ah, that's history. <laughs> Sometimes men just annoy me. That was like major self-care. I would not have finished it. I'm so proud of myself. Power bitch moves. Let's go. Okay, so hi. Calm down. Calm down. I'm going to try and complete the month-long version of Bacopoli in 48 hours. Don't read anything. If you don't read it, it can't harm you. If you don't know, Bacopoli is a readathon run by Becca. I'm sure you all do know. Where it's essentially this Monopoly board that she has created and it all has different prompts on it. Becca, for some reason, asked me to host one of the Saturday 24-hour readathons. So I'm doing that on Saturday. It's Thursday night right now. We're starting the read along, technically at midnight, but I won't be awake. So like tomorrow morning. The great thing about the Copperly is that you can do as many rolls as you want. You just have to roll again and get an extra book if you roll a double. I'm gonna roll three. I've got a really fun 24 hour readathon planned for Saturday. It's gonna be murder mystery themed. I've been planning all this stuff out and I'm so excited. Let's go roll, shall we? I'm so nervous, I'm so nervous. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> Here's my little board. Shaking the table. Oh, this bitch is shaking the table. Not a good day. Okay? Not this back bitch to is that shaking one. the table. <laughs> I don't have dice, so I've just gotten up a dice roller. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. Five. <gasps> Shit, I don't know what that is. One, two, three, four, five. Friend pick. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Okay. okay, so for our first roll, we got friend pick, and I'm gonna FaceTime Molly from Mind of Molly, and she is going to pick me a book. Okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you understand how nervous I am? <laughs> I already have two options. You have two? Three. Three, okay, okay, that's good. Midnight Library of Mm -hmm. The Chalk Man mm -hmm. or Another Body Sound by Rory Power. I'm gonna go The Chalk Man. That was one. If it fit one of the prompts, I was gonna pick it myself for this. So I'm so happy. <laughs> so happy. We just know each other so well. Okay, bye. Bye. bye, bye, bye. So Molly picked The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor, which is one that she very kindly bought for me. I feel like it's perfect for a thon like as a thriller, it's just over 300 pages. Thrillers are great things, great things for short readathons. So I'm so happy she picked it. I'm so happy she picked it. This is roll two out of three. Okay. What is that? Oh my God, it's a double. I really scratched my head and I wonder, where's God when you need him? No! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, own voices. So for this, I land on own voices and I have gone with The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. This is a graphic novel, which is perfect for a readathon. I wasn't sure if this is own voices and I've looked on multiple book blogs and it's tagged as own voices like multiple times. So I believe it is. I think it is own voices for its LGBTQ plus rep. I know this also has disability rep in it and I really love the illustration style in this. So I had to get a graphic novel in, especially because we've now gone up to four books. Yeah, I feel like this is one that I'll be able to knock out pretty easy. I'm very happy I've been able to squeeze a graphic novel in. Four. One, two, three, four. First in a series. Next we got first in a series and when I was actually looking at my TBR I don't actually have that many first books in series on there. I've gone with The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefwater. I've been meaning to read this for so long. It's like a booktube YA staple and your girl still hasn't read it. And this isn't too long. It's like just over 400 pages, which is a, not ideal, you know? Ideally, it'd be a little bit shorter, <laughs> but I can live with it. And it's YA, so hopefully it'll be a quick read. Fingers crossed, we're hoping. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
POC rep. And then for the prompt of POC rep, I have chosen Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown. I know this is magical realism about a girl who believes she's a wizard or is a wizard. I'm gonna be reading this as an audiobook because I think audiobooks are the key to success in this kind of thing. Hey. <laughs> success because when I'm doing my makeup, when I'm cooking, these are all things I'm gonna be doing. I still need to read. I don't feel like this TBR is ideal because it's, a, it's more books than I wanted. Okay, I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> So it is Friday morning, so the 48 hour readathon has begun. I've only read 30 pages of the Chalkman this morning whilst I was like still in bed. And this started off, like the first page, the prologue was like, oh shit. a girl's body has been found and it's like describing her being dead in the woods and then someone comes along and takes her head because she's been like cut up into different parts and they take her head and we don't know who it is and then we go back in time to kind of figure out what's going on from what i remember the chalk man is like a serial killer the kids before he started killing had been like drawing chalk men all over town or something like that. And so then you had that like really strong, crazy opening. And then this really shocking thing happened 20 pages in. So it's been really high tension. I'm scared. Thrillers are usually start low and build. Whereas there's two kind of really shocking, horrifying things have happened already. So I'm very intrigued to read more. I'm going to focus on this now. I've also, while well, I've been getting ready, I've listened to 13% of Black Girl Unlimited, which I'm really happy with. Like that's great progress for nine in the morning. Oh, it's 10. <laughs> The girl on it is called Echo and it is, but the author's name is Echo. So I think it's kind of heavily autobiographical and I love this. I'm loving it. So it's very magical realism. Her mother is a wizard and Echo has just learned that she's going to be a wizard too. But the way that just like language is used is so surreal. The way that everything is spoken about is so surreal. It's already dealing with very heavy topics like drug addiction and sexual abuse and stuff like that. I mean, at the moment, the character is very young. And it's really capturing that kind of like childhood wonder at the world, but even with those darker elements. And it's just really, really good. The author is narrating it and like, I don't often give audiobooks five stars, but like right now it, it feels like it could be a five star. The album's amazing, song to song, I can't stress it enough. She could release every song off here and it could be a single. And I'm gonna try and read to page 150-ish of The Chalkman just to make like a really good dent in it. I think I'm gonna watch some of my friends read with me, which I always find really helpful to like get me reading. Okay, so it's now three o'clock in the afternoon. I've only listened to like one more chapter of Black Girl Unlimited, but I have got to page 200 of The Chalk Man. I am enjoying it. It's a very, very fast paced thriller. Something that this book does really well, it alternates in chapters between 1986 and 2016. So the past and the present. At the end of each chapter, there is something that makes you wanna read in that time period again. But obviously you've gotta read a whole chapter in the other time period to then go and find out what the next part of the conversation is or what's being talked about. And so that really keeps you wanting to read. Like I was gonna check in about like three chapters ago, but stuff just kept making me wanna read on and making me wanna find out what was going on. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. But I just kind of think I don't like, I prefer female protagonists to thrillers. I just, sometimes men just annoy me. The narrator is kind of annoying. I think I know where the story is going. Like I think I know who the baddie is. And I don't, I'm, it's just pissing me off. Like I just don't want it. I mean, I could be completely wrong, but if it goes the way I think it's gonna go, I just think, oh, how boring. I need to go now and do some planning for tomorrow. I need to actually plan what I'm doing. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs>
Good evening. It's much later. I spent about two hours just planning out the last few things for tomorrow. Or is it still tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> the readathon that is about to start. And like figuring out who the murderer is. I don't know why I'm pointing my reading light at you. Anyway. And then I finished The Chalk Man. And I have mixed feelings about it. I enjoyed it a lot. It's a very easy, quick, fast paced read. I just found out it was a debut. This was CJ Tudor's first book. And I think it does not read as a debut. It feels really established and authoritative in terms of the voice. However, part of what I thought would happen did happen. Sometimes with these things, I don't know whether you're supposed to know from the beginning like I like I did or if I'm I just got the mind of a mastermind see I'm telling you I have the mind of a master master I have the mind of a mastermind what's that I don't know or if you're not you know whenever I figure something out I'm like well surely that was supposed to be obvious then because I don't often figure stuff out but it did annoy me it did piss me off it wasn't the big reveal part it was at the end it was like on the last two pages and I was like oh come on oh come on hmm bitch mother piece of shit. the part of the ending the big reveal that i didn't predict it just felt a bit shoehorned in like it didn't really make sense i just was not a fan i was just sitting there kind of going like i feel like it was obvious and yet so unnecessary at the same time it reminded me of the last by hannah jameson in the sense that the last like is way better at the beginning than it is at the end the ending is weird as fuck this like isn't five stars at the beginning in the way the last was it probably is like four stars and the ending wasn't as weird but it's still the ending wasn't as good as the start which usually thrillers I find are the other way around and I'm thinking to myself I enjoyed the last more so then I'm thinking I can't give this four stars which is what I gave the last so I think it's like a 3.5 so it is now quarter to 11 so I've got an hour and a quarter until the readathon starts I'm gonna listen to some more of Black Girl Unlimited for the next hour and a quarter I'm now about 35% of the way through and still loving it like still fully obsessed and then for the hour whilst I do the sprint I'm gonna make a start on the Raven Boys Morning! I thought I'd come at you this morning from my kitchen. Anyone like the panda? Anyone want any Cocoa Pops? I didn't actually read any of the Raven Boys last night, which I'm a bit worried about, not gonna lie. But the sprints have been really fun. I just finished the first challenge. And in an hour, I have got an Instagram live. Thought I would check in with you and let you know that I am now 70% of the way through Black Girl Unlimited. And it is incredible it is heartbreaking it's magical it's fantastical heavy trigger warnings for rape and sexual assault and drug use it's just so good it's so good it's so good ah that's history <laughs> We are following Echo throughout her life. So like it starts when, when she's like five. Right now I, we're up to I think around the end of high school. So we've already followed her throughout a lot of her life. Something which I think is really, really interesting is that in a chapter, not all the time, but there's been like a few chapters like this, we'll be focusing on two separate scenes and she'll flick between the two, but like the break will be in the middle of a sentence. So like you'll get to the middle of a sentence for one scene and then the next scene will start and then we'll go back to the other scene. That kind of disjointedness, especially because I'm listening to the audiobook, I can't see it coming on the page. It's really interesting because sometimes you're like, oh shit, is something wrong with the audiobook? But then you realise that it's just the style that the book is being told in. And I've never read something like that where it flicks between these scenes back and forth, but like stopping in the middle of a narrative, in the middle of a piece of action or dialogue or whatever, is really, really cool. I, I'm loving it. I feel like it's going to be heartbreaking. It already has been heartbreaking. I'm a bit worried about trying to read the whole of the Raven Boys today I'm not gonna lie because it is a bit longer but I'm hoping because it's YA it's gonna read really really fast so we shall see so I am 50 pages into the Raven Boys and I'm really enjoying it but <laughs> this today's stressful day calls for McDonald's breakfast so I'm having this and then I think I'm going to switch to reading uh, The Tea Dragon Society for a bit next. I 
sat and I read The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. These are tea dragons, these little kind of animals. You can brew tea from their leaves or the flowers that they grow. That has magical properties and it can unlock memories that they've had and it's just so magical and whimsical and lovely and soft. There is LGBTQ plus rep in this, there's disabled rep, there's I would say mental health rep as well. I can't wait to get my hands on the second in this series. Oh, it, made me, it made me just feel so happy reading it. Is today a good day? Today's a great day. It's a blessed day. Nope. It's the kind of thing I want to read again straight away. It's got the most beautiful art style I've ever seen in a graphic novel. And I really loved the characters. I particularly loved, there's like this elderly gay couple. And I'd say they were my favourites. Like they're just so cool and loving and just amazing. So I would really, really recommend this if you're looking for some quick reads, if you're looking for some graphic novels. Up there with Heartstopper is one of my favourite graphic novels. And then whilst I was doing my second challenge, which was the Scavenger Hunt, I also just finished Black Girl Unlimited and I think I'm gonna give this five stars as well. There is many, many trigger warnings for this. Rape, sexual assault, abuse, child abuse, poverty, trauma, death of a parent, a hit and run. Like there's there's a lot of really traumatic topics. Echo Brown manages to explore this, this trauma in such a magical way. And it is just one of the most kind of powerful, heart wrenching, a book that just grabs you, a book that completely just grabs you and like shakes you by the shoulders. It's a really wonderful um, account of growing up black and poor in America. And I just love the idea of wizards in this book and these women being wizards. And I love how women came together as a community. I loved it. So I've given two books five stars just out of the blue. Crazy. <laughs> I went two months without any five star book and I've read two in one day. Like this is absolutely incredible. So all I have left to read is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stevewater. <laughs> I've made the executive decision to stop reading The Raven Boys and instead to pick up Silver in the Wood. I worked it out and I was only just going to finish this if I read a page per minute for like almost the entire thing. And it's just not realistic. It's just not realistic for me. It's not realistic. It's just not realistic. And I just felt like I was not savoring it. It's a book I've wanted to read for so long. And I just felt like I was rushing it and not taking it in at all. So I want to save it for a time that I will really, really enjoy it. So instead, I'm going to be reading Silver in the Wood, which is very short and still fits for the prompt of read the first in the series. This is the first in a duology, I believe. I think the second one has just come out. The YouTube Live is about to start. It's much later in the evening. Firstly, I just wanna to say to myself, I am so thankful I stopped reading The Raven Boys. Honestly, that was like major self-care. I would not have finished it. I'm so proud of myself. Power bitch moves. Let's go. But I did finish Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. Firstly, it's a male-male romance, which I, I had no idea and I loved that aspect of it. I loved this kind of like woodland fantasy, magical, mystical story with a male male romance. There is a kind of man, kind of woodland creature called Tobias. He is able to understand the woods and like control them in some sense. And there is like these woodish creatures that he is friends with. And then this man moves into the kind of house that owns the land that the wood is on. Stuff from Tobias's past is kind of dug up and they have to deal with the magic of the woods. That's what I'm gonna say. My lips were made for talking, and that's just what they'll do. I really, really like this. I'm gonna give it four stars. The atmosphere, the the vibe, the kind of nature of the story that the author was able to build up in such a short amount of time, like it's tiny, was brilliant. I, I really, really loved that aspect of it. It was magical. It was like truly magical. And you know I love magical stories. If you like, you're craving that kind of woodish, mystical, magical story in the woods. Woodish story in the woods. It's been a long day. <laughs> I feel ill. I've got to sleep all night. I'm... <laughs> 
this is perfect for that. But also if you're looking for a male-male romance that is a bit different, that's me all done. Thank you so much if you have participated at all in this 24 hour readathon that I run. It has been so much fun. Like it's been, it's been the most fun. I've had such a wonderful time interacting with everyone and seeing everyone's theories for the murder mystery has been so cool. You guys have really, you really got into it. Like you really bought into the idea of what I was trying to sell. And I can't wait to see how you all react to who the killer is. So yeah, if you did participate, thank you. You can tell when I'm tired because my eyes go all red. Like sometimes people comment, are you high? And I'm like, no, I'm just so tired. Thank you so much if you participated. And even if you just watched and enjoyed this vlog, thank you so much. And yeah, I will see you very, very soon in another video. Bye.